Real estate investing is not get rich quick, but it's get rich for sure. Ooh. 90% of millionaires in this country were created with real estate. Facts. Success is not hard. It's just that being mediocre and average is so easy. Ooh. Ooh. So let me. Let's be my rants and gems. Let's be my rants and gems. Y'all can do what we discover. He's the the kings and the queens were the mother lie. All right, gem droppers. This is going to be a great episode for you guys. We got one of my favorite people in the world, but one of the best real estate investors out there, my girl, Atia Blair. How are you today? I am fantastic. So good to be with you both. Listen, it's so good to have you. I Absolutely. love seeing a beautiful woman that is investing, oh, right? Oh, we Thank love you, it, queen. Right? Thank <laughs> you, queen. You know, I'm a woman. Queen of king. Thank you. So for me, I love to see women doing it, and you've been doing your thing for a very long time. So yeah. listen, let's get right to business. Should we buy or flip in this market today? So... I'm a buy and hold girl through mm -hmm. and through, right? Yes, um, values are up so you can flip and make a killing, right? But everybody's talking about building generational wealth. You cannot build wealth flipping property. Talk to them. Ooh. You can't. You can get money and we got. We all got to get money and Absolutely. getting money is good, but you can't build wealth and I'm here for the long game, right? So mm -hmm. real estate investing and you know, don't let social media fool you. Real estate investing is not get rich quick, but it's get rich for sure. 90% of millionaires in this country were created with real estate. Facts. And so it's the way to go. And so I'm in it for the long game. So what that looks like is, so I'll just give you some numbers real quick. Let's talk. On right. a, I have five rehabs going on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm at the tail end of two. These are side by side, small multifamily, um, just, you know, six units, right? Um, you know, six units, it doesn't sound terribly impressive, right? However, the number, so I bought each building for $50,000 each. What market? Philadelphia. Philly. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I put 175000 into one, 150000 into the other. So I'm all in around two twenty five. dollars you know, for, for both. Um, and my appraisals just came in, one at three seventy five, one at four twenty five. dollars Nice. So I have, you can do the math of on the equity. So these buildings are worth, you know, kissing $900,000. And I paid $50,000 for each, right? Now, I could have sold them, mm -hmm. right, and flipped it. And I could have made a couple hundred thousand dollars. Right. But these buildings over time, because of what the market is doing, I'll make an M on it. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm willing to wait. That's it. You Long just gave time. us, you, so basically you just gave everyone the game real quick. Yeah. Listen, you have to buy and hold. Mm -hmm. But what made you like come up with this strategy and how do you stick to it? Because most people want to hurry up and flip. Yeah. And did you make that mistake early on in your career? I sure did. Okay. So when I first went full time, you know, I'm a recovering TV producer. A recovering TV yes. producer. Yes. <laughs> oh, tell, tell me, you know, I know all too much about that, honey. I know yes. where, where, where you been. Yeah. So I, you know, um, before going full time in real estate, I worked for NBC News. This is my last station. I also worked for um, Fox and CBS over 10 years. And I just knew that that's what I always wanted to do. But the entrepreneurship bug hit me. And um, when it did, I said, okay, I'm going to flip houses because that's what I saw on TV. It's sexy. It's exciting. You know, you see those numbers. And the truth is HGTV, whatever TV show, doesn't give you the true numbers. It's something like buy it for 50000 yeah. put in 50000 sell it for fifty. you know, 150000 You made fifty. No. So after you pay your realtor's commissions, after you pay your holding costs, after you pay taxes. Yep. So to answer your question, Kiana, it was the taxes. <laughs> and my first year as a full time real estate investor, I made six figures. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for every new business owner, that's the first goal. I just want to get to six figures. Yes. And I got there. And then when tax time came, it wasn't six figures. Nope. anymore. Oh, no. Right? Nope. And so, silent partner needed their money. Exactly. Right. So I said I need a better way to do this. And buying and holding property, specifically using the birth strategy, was the way to go. So let's talk about the birth strategy. Right. right. First of all. Explain the birth strategy. And second part of the question is, do you recommend this for first-time investors? Absolutely. It is hands down the easiest, fastest way to get started with real estate investing with less money, time, and stress, period. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Argue, argue with me. You <laughs> don't debate you. Don't, don't debate, debate you. It's undebatable. Yeah, it, it's a it's a major hack. Um, it's a major gem, you know, as far as getting started. So, um, um, BRRRR stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Okay. So, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. So, you buy the property, right? You're buying a distressed property. I tell people all the time, real estate investors get paid to solve problems. Pro uh, properties that need renovating, they're a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, you buy a distressed property, then you renovate it, you add value to it. You rent it out, you stabilize it, then you go to the bank, you say, hey, bank, I have this new beautiful property, just like the, the deal that I broke down to you a few minutes ago. Right. Hey, I have this new beautiful property. It's worth a lot more than I pay for it. Give me a loan, right? We're leveraging debt to build wealth. That's what I know when we grew up, our parents and everybody else told us debt's bad. Right. That's going to kill you. It's going to murder you. It's going to push you under. Um, but the truth is wealthy people leverage debt and it's just a fancy way of saying I'm using someone else's money to make money. And so that's what the strategy is. So you don't have to come to the table with 20% down. You don't have to save up money for years. We all know no wealthy person's going to say I saved my way to millions. It just it doesn't Absolutely. happen. If it does, it's over like 30 years. You know what I mean? It takes so long. With this particular strategy... Um, you can become a millionaire in just a couple years, or e even in one year, really, if you do enough. Can we can we really break this down a little bit deeper, though? Sure. So let's go through every step of the bar, right? Okay. So buy. Yes. How are you finding and analyzing these deals? Okay. So I love about 90% of my portfolio is built off market. Okay. Off market. Off market means that it's not on those websites that you're looking at. So the Zillow's, the Redfin's, right. know, all those websites. It's from wholesalers, right? Um, a lot of folks are promoting wholesaling. It's something that I will never do because I don't want to... You know, wholesalers do a lot of dirty work. Absolutely. They're driving for dollars, you know, driving around the neighborhoods, calling people, getting cussed out. Um, so I pay the wholesalers to to do the work for me, right? And then as a licensed realtor, I have to be careful with wholesaling anyway. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Now, <laughs> yes. I was just going to say that. So you now can you can get in trouble. And, and, and actually, in, um, in Philadelphia, they passed a law making it illegal for realtors to wholesale. So I can't. That is crazy. Really? Because you want to know why? Why? Because realtors, you can make more money wholesaling. Correct. Than being a realtor. So they and like so a lot of realtors were doing that. And so basically the law that they passed said something to the effect of um, when you get a listing, you have to list it publicly within 24 hours or you're at jeopardy of losing your license. Wow. Yeah, wow. We may see a bunch of people drop off their licenses up in Philadelphia. Because oh, I mean, once they learn the game. Mm -hmm. And I, I follow a lot of realtors in Philly and I see a lot of flipping happening. So now we have... The buy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now the so renovate. Off market. Um, so renovate. So it's interesting. So I just gave those numbers. I got those two properties for $50,000 each. One I put one fifty dollars into. The other I put one seventy five. dollars It is not uncommon to spend more money on the renovation than the purchase of the property. Because there's less competition when you're buying. These buildings wall falling down. I'm going to um, post them on social so you'll see them. Uh -huh. You can see the, the basement from the second floor. Like wow. no floors oh, wow. are gone. So I do full guts. That's another gem. So I do full guts on all of my properties because if you are buying a preoccupied building... You don't know what's behind the walls. And I, I do own several buildings that I bought um, preoccupied, but I get more calls on those couple buildings than I do my whole portfolio because I didn't do everything brand new from scratch. Mm -hmm. So going through a full gut, it's it's not the easiest process, especially when you're in a big city with a lot of regulation in Philadelphia. Is uh, I mean, it's just like... Every day, it seems like they're hitting Something. us with another requirement. Yeah. However, for the long term, and I'm in this for the long game, um, I don't. I'm. I almost get no calls for mm. repairs for things breaking. If it did break, the tenants did it, and they know they have to pay for it because everything's brand new. Or if there's a system that doesn't work, like the HVAC goes bad. I just call my HVAC guy because he just put the system in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just call him up and that's at no additional cost for me. So let's stay on the renovate real quick. Okay. Contractors, C-O-N, con, tractors, <laughs> right? Give us he three He always tips. says that. Because it's a fact and she knows <laughs> yeah. it, right? We all know it. We yeah. deal with these contractors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So give us three quick tips 
for newbies who are looking to be first time investors who want to do the bird strategy yeah. to hire a contractor. Yeah. So, oh, all right. So I have a few. And actually this week, this one contractor, he really took me there and I had to just bring it on down. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing that I do. And so the goal in business is to hire enough. It's to get to a, a level where you can hire people to do the work you don't want to do. So yes. I just want to drop that. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, starting out, I, I wasn't making enough money to hire people, but now I have a buffer between me and the contractor. So I don't have to speak to them um, because I just, I want to be happy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? All right. So when finding contractors, um, one of my biggest tips is you can go to a website like Angie's List, right? I like to call Angie's List like the Amazon of contractors because you have reviews from people like us, right? Real people. Um, so the the trick, though, is when you have an Angie's List contractor, because they give them grades, A, B, C, and once you're a D, they kick you off the site, right? So that's good to know. Um, so what I do is I look for A-rated contractors, with not as many reviews. For example, if you have an A-rated contractor with a thousand reviews, mm -hmm. they're good, they know they're good, and they're gonna charge top dollar for it, right? Mm -hmm. And they're probably like a um, a, a company, uh, like a nationwide company, yeah. where you're paying them, the CEO, the beach house, all, right? So you really wanna go for mom and pops people, so I find them A-rated with like, a hundred good reviews. Okay. A hundred twenty. Okay. That way you're getting directly to the business owner and you're not paying an extra two, three, five, ten thousand dollars to the middleman. Okay. Yeah. That's a really good tip. Yeah, it's tip. really good. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one is um all right, I'm gonna give y'all one of my best ones. I love it. Yeah, love it. Let's family. Go. All right, so I pay my contractors electronically. I do not do checks anymore. And here's why. I pay them electronically um, with a platform where I can snatch the money back if they want to act like they don't want to show up, mm. Mm. if you're not doing your job. So it's like, it's no, it, it mitigates all of my risk with contractors. I have been investing in real estate now for 15 years. I started when I was 23. 38 now mm -hmm. I have never had a contractor run off with my money mm. wow and, and that was before I even learned this strategy but now it's impossible and and for you know because some contractors are old school Absolutely. and they'll fight you on that but yeah. they be like I want to do cash do you like money the yeah. only way to get money from me is digitally so I can snatch it back if you act like you don't want to show up or if you take my materials on another job or what mm. have you. Love it. Um, the other thing, so you asked for three, I'll give you this one too. Security. You got to always have eyes on your property. Yes. So I use, I'll give you, I'll tell you. So it's a Simply Safe system, right? So Simply Safe is one of the few security systems that works off of cellular towers versus like an ADT or a company that has to come and wire front point or whoever has to come and wire the system in. So front point, they will send you the system in the mail. You put up your own contacts. You can do motion sensors. You can do cameras. You can do glass breaking sensors. Uh -huh. You put them in or have whomever on your team put them in and it has this tower and it's loud and so um, I give all the contractors so the HVAC guys have their code the electricians have their code so I can see who's coming in and out of my property at any time I can see if they left the job and forgot to lock the door or whatever. You can even do digital locks. Um, and that alone, them knowing that there's a camera there, them knowing that there's a security system there, will keep them from coming back to steal because contractors will put in the pipes and steal them. Put in the breakers and oh come my back God. and steal them. And maybe it's not, because um, I've had theft on multiple occasions, and maybe it's not like the main guy you hire, but it's his workers. Uh, you know what I mean? You just never know. Yeah, you never know. So I just saved Big folks gems. like thousands and Big thousands. You literally just dropped. Big you gems. saved them so much money. Big gems. Yeah. Man. Okay, right. what's the next? Let's go to the next one. Um. So what? Buy, rehab, rent. Rent. Um, so, How um, are you finding your tenants? So I do... So right now, um, in the Philadelphia market, I am focusing on Section 8 or subsidized um, tenants. Programs. Yeah, programs. Okay. Um, because um, just 
All right, so here's what it is. My tenants out in the suburbs where rent is higher, I don't have any issues with them. In the city where rents are like, a th so my tenants that are a thousand and below, and I really try not to go below a thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say twelve hundred and below because the majority of my apartments in Philly, like two bedrooms, they're going for like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, right? Uh huh. Um, so that number and below, I, I have, you know, sometimes you, they they are in um, when finances shift the middle class tends to be hurt the most Correct. versus people who are at a certain level, their money's good regardless. I yes. think you guys understand what I'm saying. Oh, I absolutely Correct. understand what yeah. you're saying. And so because of those variables, I don't want to be left stranded financial. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I am cash flowing well enough where I can have a couple buildings where I'm getting nothing. Um, but still, I'm in this to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, so that's what I do. I'm doing subsidized housing there. And then outside of that, like in the suburbs, I'll find tenants, you know, um, Facebook Marketplace. I'll post the uh, people sleep on Facebook Marketplace. You know what? That's a I, big I, gem I, right I started there. to yeah. see it kind of coming down my timeline. I'm telling you, Facebook Marketplace, hands down, the best place. So when I started, 15 years ago, it would be like a sign outside because you have the people who live in that particular... Like, if you don't have any money, that sign outside, people who are driving past that area, they work and they live and they play there. So they are going to be, you know, probably someone who will want to rent your place. Mm -hmm. um, but Facebook Marketplace is just hitting so, so many... I get more wow. calls from, the, from there than, than, than anywhere else. Facebook Another gym. Zillow. She is Zillow, a certified gym dropper. Because Zillow was free. They During yeah. the pandemic, they started charging $10 mm -hmm. yeah. with, yes. a week. Is it? Wow. Yeah. To, to, to market your, your, oh, your yeah. rentals. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Zillow has changed their whole their whole lineup. We well, don't I mean, to... you saw how they flipping business. Yes. When they had no yeah. damn choice. Exactly. <laughs> they exactly. had to bring your money from somewhere. Yeah. All right. So we got the renting. Mm -hmm. Now... The refinance. The refinance. Most important part. part. <laughs> yes. That's the second that's part. That's, I, that's the part I like. <laughs> the the refinance. Like. Come, you know, come so see MG the mortgage guy. Listen, people get so afraid of refinancing. Yeah. So break it down. Of course, you know, MG going to have to plug, plug <laughs> yourself. I could plug myself, but I'm going to let her tell you do her thing because this is her time. Yeah. So it's the sexy part because you are picking up. So when the refinance happens... I am picking up these buildings for zero dollars. Whether I put some money in or I borrow money from wherever, it costs me nothing when that refi hits. For example, I'll use the same buildings that I was just talking about. So, um, you know, I'm, that 50000 each, uh -huh. I borrowed that. So that's 100000 and then you have the um, 150 and 175. That's 325. So that's 425, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel the need to stop there because I am not great at math, and I I oh, want to share that. We got that. the calculator. No, 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 no. I got <laughs> we it. Got the I want to share that. I want to take time to share that because some people feel like I'm not good enough to invest in real estate, mm -hmm. and I try to share like. Just be real. I am not great at math, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing it well, so you guys can too. I just I'm ready. But okay, I love it. I love so it. 425, right? And uh -huh. so my appraisals came in at um, so it's the 375, and then the 425. So let's do one deal, yeah. right? Just to make it easy and simple sure. for numbers purposes. 425. Right? Yeah. Sure. So you're in it's, one... it's actually they have the same address. Okay. So they're side by side, but they have the same address. Okay. Um, but the point is, when I did my cash out refi. The bank is willing to give you, on average, banks will give you 75% of, of the value thing. of the property. So when that appraisal came in at over $800,000, mm -hmm. and I'm only all in at four twenty-five, dollars mm -hmm. um, so that's like six hundred and some change, it's right? $600,000. 600000 mm -hmm. okay. So I get to take home the difference. So I got cut a check for uh, right over $200,000, mm -hmm. um, and... Boom. That's my money. And you did all of that because you did the Burr method. I did the Burr method. And so now I have 200000 So here's the thing. I have $200,000 to play with. It was two sixty dollars actually, to be exact. I have $260,000. I don't have to pay taxes on it because debt is not taxable. Correct. And mm. I never have to pay the $260,000 back. Because my tenants pay that money back as they're paying their rent. 
Correct. And over time, we're in the long game. Over time, I don't do any 30-year loans. I do 20. So over 20 years, and I'll speed it up because I make extra payments. Mm -hmm. um, I will have this asset that costs me nothing. I got this $260,000 that I can go now and buy another property with. Actually put in an offer on a, uh, pr a condo in the Bahamas. So we'll cross and Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Uh, and, and my tenants are paying for that. So wait a minute, you said something I thought was very interesting. Yeah. Now. You don't do 30-year terms on your rentals. No. You're doing 20-year terms on your rentals. Yeah, 15 Ex or 20. Explain why. Well, it does decrease your cash flow, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I make money other ways, right? It, again, it goes back to, to the long game. And I want these buildings to be paid off as quickly as possible. And my personal goal is to have a million dollars in cash flow, right? Because I know... I know this might sound crazy to some people, but there are levels to this thing, right? So I'm going to keep it real, right? I've unfortunately now lost my mother and my father, right? Mm -hmm. Condolences. Thank Not you. Condolences. I appreciate that. And I miss them every day. And when I think about them, it is a constant reminder to me that I have one chance at this life. Maybe there's an afterlife. I haven't been there, so I can't tell you. Maybe one day I'll come back and tell you. But... Um, I get to live this life once and I want to live it well. And guess what? I need money to do that, period. Yeah. And also, I need so much money because it does not feel good to me to be living in, you know, I have, we have two nice homes. I drive the cars, whatever. It doesn't feel good to me to be living well. And the people that I love, I can't do anything for. Ooh. So during the pandemic, I had family members, they literally could not eat. And they were like, Atia, I'm struggling. What you need? No problem. Like, it was nothing for me. You know what I mean? I had one of my cousins. He's like, Atia, I'm in school. Lost my job. I can't finish my last semester in school. And he wasn't coming asking for money. We just talk all the time. It's like, we tight. It's like my brother. He's my cousin, but he's like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, how much? You know what I mean? He told me, sent the money to his school so he can finish and get his degree. Dope. You know what I mean? So I'm already making more money than I ever thought I would make in my entire life. So I'm good. I'm gonna make some more. Like, of course, you know? yeah, yeah. And because and people go why? Because I can. I just really want to see how far I can go. You know what I mean? But this um, is my this this is my talk right now. Yeah, I'm loving. <laughs> I'm I'm loving you. That. This everything you're saying it just resonates in my soul. Yeah. Everything you're saying and it has everything to do with the one life. Yeah. Seeing how far you're going to go, but you fi figured out a way to say I'm gonna make this a passive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like passively make it because mm -hmm. you know we can't roll over the fact that you have an active real estate license yeah, yeah, yeah. I do too I'm licensed in Pennsylvania and Maryland so mm -hmm. what's going on what, mm -hmm. like what was the reasoning behind getting your license yes because I was flipping like crazy and I love my realtors but I was giving them so much money and so I actually did a six figure flip and I got my license right in time for that so I got like $110,000 plus a $9,000 commission absolutely you know what I mean so it was just to keep the money in house. I don't use my license much. And then I have family members and friends that I use my license for, but I don't um, help people buy. And Smart play. Yeah. Smart yes. play. Multiple yes. streams of income yes. and multiple streams of peace. Yeah. Yes. That's what we're all about <laughs> yes. here. Rent all gems. of that. Yes. 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 No, I, I love everything you're saying and I appreciate you coming over it. Um, and breaking down the Burr method for our first time investors because we yeah. get so many questions about, especially in this market, oh, yes. mm -hmm. right? And that's why I opened up the way I did is should you buy, should you flip or whatever the case may be. But folks don't really understand the Burr strategy in a whole. So I'm, I'm happy that you really broke down every step in detail for our audience. Yeah. Absolutely, because I could have... Um, sold those properties and made, again, made a couple hundred thousand dollars because people look at the short term. Yeah. Guess what? When you sell that property and you drive past it five years from now, 10 years from now, you're going to be nauseous at the amount of money that you could have made if you just waited a minute. So should people buy real estate in today's market with high interest rates, high home prices, recession looming? What is your thoughts on the current market? Wait a minute. The recession is not looming, okay? It's looming. The, what what, what we're going looming. to say, the alleged, alleged. Oh, the recession, alleged recession looming. Okay. What the, Pardon it's me, a queen. speculation <laughs> of okay. a recession looming. And matter of fact, now that we spoke about it, what are your thoughts? Do you feel like there's going to be a recession? Then double back and answer his question. Um, 
It's hard to speculate. The market does have to correct, so it's going to correct. And one way or another, I do not believe that it's going to correct the way that it did last time. So people are like, I'm waiting for the market to drop to buy real estate. I think that was a huge mistake this time around because yep. the interest rates have gone up. They qualify for less money, less house. Yeah. You know, um, so I think that, um, well, first of all, it's always a good time to buy real estate. Right. Now, the Fact. thing is, when the market changes and when the interest rate changes and the economy changes, that separates the real real estate investors from the not so real real estate investors, right? Facts. I can get busy in sink any or, market. Sink or swim, baby. Oh, let's say talk yo. Ish. Talk it. I can get swim. busy Ish. in any market. For example, everybody knows that lumber prices are up now. The cost of everything is up right now for oh, multiple yes. reasons, right? So after these five rehabs that I have going on right now, I'm just looking at turnkey. Right, I actually just put an eight unit uh, in Baltimore under contract, right? I'm just looking at turnkey. I'm not doing any renovations because it's so expensive, but I just don't want to stop buying real estate because you miss out and you can never go back and get it for the number that you were able to get it for. Mm -hmm. um, so you just have to pivot your strategy. You have to have mental agility in business, but certainly in real estate to win. And so that's what I do. I just pivot and I shift. I don't stop. Let me ask you it. this. You got these deals going. You got a de well, how many deals do you have going on right now? Entertain us. And um, she said entertain, <laughs> entertain us. Entertain us because I, I, already, I already counted two. You got one in Baltimore. You got one in the Bahamas. You just nah, slid. Five. You, you five slid. Rehab yeah, five rehabs. Yeah, five rehabs. Then you got those. You just kind of slid the Bahamas in like an afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be calling you. Tell us, tell us what deals you have going on and, you know, how, how this is going to look for you. Sure. So the um, condo in the Bahamas, it was really, first of all, my husband's born and raised in the Bahamas. Shout out to Mr. Blair. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Blair. Mr. Blair. <laughs> yes. So he's born and raised in the Bahamas. And during the pandemic, we were like, we spent time. At, we have a house that we go to on the weekends in the DMV. And we're like, we love that home. We're like, we're like, man, if we had a place on the water, we would have been there during the pandemic. So that's where, the, where that came from. Um, and then, you know, we'll just be close to his family. Um, and then the uh, Baltimore Project, Philly, it's really tightening. There's a lot of New York money coming yeah. into the market. A lot yeah. of L LA money coming into the market because Comcast built their second largest tower. Yep. Um, Comcast brought in a lot of people from the Silicon Valley. They're like, what? A house for 400000 That's free. Yep. You know, so the numbers are going nuts. And so I'm, you know, dipping my toe in other markets. Um, so you have that deal in Baltimore. Um, I am a lot of my buddies uh, get on me for not partnering everything that I own. I own. I don't. 100%. Ooh, she goes, um, she on that Drake tip. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, don't be like that, sis. Um, the reason why I do that is because I'm not investing just to be like, I got X amount of doors, right? This is a legacy play. Um, this is a comfort play. This is an early retirement play. And when you syndicate and when you have 100 partners on one deal, it has to be split so many ways. That's one of the reasons why I love smaller multifamily properties um, because of the control that I have have over them, right? I can, you know, sell them real quick, buy them real quick. I don't have to have a board meeting. I don't have to sign, me you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have control. I like control. We all like control over our own lives. And that's why many of us got into business for ourselves. Absolutely. So we can have control over our finances, our time, all the things. Absolutely. And so um, doing smaller multifamily gives me that control. I am now looking at like mid-size, when I say mid-size, like 10 to 30 units um, because there's less competition in that space. Um, the big boys are 100 units plus and they syndicate, which again, I'm not interested in. And all the new investors want the singles, duplexes and triplexes. So there's way less competition in 10 to 30 units. So that's where I'm going to hang out for a little bit. I love that. I so, love it. Look, I love the fact that you came on here. You dropped so many gems. I love our new format, too. We're getting straight to it. Listen, right? I, we done got straight to the point. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, oh, we do got each other numbers. I just want to yeah. make sure. Yeah. I, like, We're getting straight to yeah, it. Yeah, you, you got straight to it. You got so busy in this episode that yeah. I'm sitting here like, okay, you have blown their socks off, and I know it. I love yeah. it. I mean, you broke it down simply, yeah. and... Even the Burr method, like you can never break it down enough. And I think the way that you broke it down will help somebody. Absolutely. Um, and that's what we have this podcast for. Like literally, you got to tell people where to find you, mm -hmm. um, you know, to keep up with your projects and just everything about you, my queen. And then we need, we need one more gem. You can't leave here without giving our audience one more gem. 
One more gym. Especially for the women because, yeah. you know, you, you really advocate for women investors. Sure. You was telling us some stats. Tell us those stats one more time and then give us a gem for the ladies. So, sure. So, um, women make up only 30% of real estate investors. And if you count women who are doing it, you know, solo, that mm -hmm. number's even less. A lot of them do it with a male counterpart. Um, I do have an amazing husband. And at the same time, you don't have to. I started investing in real estate before we got married, right? Sis, you can do it. You can do it, right? Um, and then uh, women of color, black women, make up only 3.5% of the space. Wow. So even though teaching is a labor of love, I do it because uh, people look at me and they say, I can do it because I see you doing it. So in my community, I have over 100 testimonials of women and some men too, um, who I've helped get their first investment property. Um, so yeah, I love that. And as far as a gym, I would say... Because I think people are sitting here watching all of us. They tune in because they love you, Kiana. They love you, MG. Mm -hmm. They're watching me now, maybe saying, you know, wow. Of course. And the truth is that success is not hard. It's just that being mediocre and average is so easy. Oof. 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 Oh, just so let me Lord. <laughs> Repeat that okay, one more I'm, time. She, she, she she a a gym over here. Good God. Damn, being I'm successful now. is not hard, but being but we don't get there because being mediocre and average is just so easy. And so what I mean by that is, you know, I started working on my business while I was still working a nine to five. Most people would just go home and watch TV. Or um, you won't take time to do continuing education, you know, or you won't, um, you just won't do, they want the success, but not the work, right? Oh, yes. And we all have the same amount of time in every day. So it's like, what you going to do with the time that you have? Um, they look, and I, uh, you know, they're all watching us because we're in the real estate space, right? Real estate professionals, no matter what corner of that space that you're in, get paid big money because we're solving big problems. Big problems. A lot of people, they want the big money, but they don't want to add the value. That's how you make money, by solving problems and adding value. And if you want big money, solve a big problem for a big group of people, and you'll be wealthy forever. Gym dropper. Certified gym dropper. <laughs> Certified gym dropper. It is hot in here because you done burnt this motherfucker she gave, she, up. She shut it down. It is hot. I see flames down. all around here. Look, tell them how to find you. You can find me on Instagram, at Atiyah Blair. You can find me on YouTube, at Atiyah Blair. My team is like, get on TikTok. I will not be dancing and pointing on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you, be able to, you can find me there, at Atiyah. I don't do the dancing and pointing. Me, this is. Uh, <laughs> but I will Likewise. educate you. I will share this information and gems. I love to. I love teaching. It is a blessing to be a blessing. Fact. And so I use my platform for that. So it's interesting. I talk about like all the things that I don't share you know, like a whole lot of, I do a little personal stuff, but I'm really there to educate because I feel like that's what helps folks. That's what you stuff. need to do. Let yeah. me tell you something. Yeah. That is my goal. I yeah. think that it's okay. I, it, people always think that you should, I think you should share what you feel comfortable with. Exactly. But when you are an expert in your field, people are coming to you for that expertise. Yeah. Um, if you don't bring it to them, they won't miss it. You yeah. know what I'm Agreed. saying? That people can't miss what they never had. Yeah. But they're going to be so inspired by your words, what you say, how you advocate for women, how you carry yeah. yourself. Like yeah. you are a walking, talking, breathing queen that we are sitting dear. beside. So and I am you. just honored <laughs> to sit beside you um, because I can feel your passion for this business and for women. And it is something that we need in this world. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Look, thank you for joining us today. Tap in with Tia Blair. Make sure you tap in with all her pages. Uh, support her. And women, if she can do it, so can you. My name is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, but better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is Kiana Watson, license number 317576, real estate broker extraordinaire. And thank you for tuning in to another incredible episode of the Ransom Gym Show. Peace. Peace.